Hey everyone, Chris Figgins here on uh, behalf of my whole family. We just want to say thank you for a, an awesome uh, 2020 release under less than ideal circumstances. Uh, we're, all four of us are super bummed that we can't have our normal spring release weekend. So in lieu of that, uh, first of all, we just wanted to say thank you. And also I'm going to take you, after we talk for a bit about kind of the history of spring release, take you on a virtual vineyard and winery tour since you guys can't come here mom or dad you like care to like chime in about how it started and why it started at the very beginning you know 40 plus years ago spring release weekend started actually we had two um, open houses a year um, because we did whites we would uh, release in may and then we went to what was called leonetti weekend which was annually missing this open house is 45 Leonetti open houses right. so it's, it's kind of sad to see that all of you most of you won't be here but uh, we know you'll be here next year and then of course all the other wineries came on board and so spring release weekend is a very big deal here in Walla Walla so everybody's very saddened that people will not be coming to our beautiful little town so thanks to our list members supporting us supporting small businesses and small wineries in Walla Walla we're so thankful and appreciative of, of that and uh, yeah typically the reward is spring release weekend and obviously that's not happening this year but hopefully through this uh, awesome little reality look into uh, into our lives here and the tasting that uh, you'll feel a little bit part of being here I have like a couple of very distinct memories about spring release weekend um, before we built the new winery we used to have the tent out front remember the year where the storm we literally had customers holding down the poles yeah. <laughs> everyone hold the pole you know and everyone had kind of helped us keep the tent yeah, in place yeah. for an hour yeah uh, other than that it seems like we've had absolutely awesome weather like we're having right now yeah. but over 45 years um, it's really gone well but I always have said I wish I had wrote a book about Leonetti Really it's not too late, it, right? It's not too late. There's there's not a better time to, to visit the valley than the fresh spring growth and it, it's just glorious. I, I really do look forward to it yeah. every year. Don Alianico, Sierra so, Padachi Vineyard. Awesome. So our 2014 Alianico varietal is, is native to southern Italy, so the Leonetti family being from Calabria it was kind of a natural. So we planted it at our Sierra Padachi Vineyard, which is where my great grandparents um, originally came from a little town in uh, near Cosenza in Calabria. It's, it, we release it so late because it's a it's an acidic and tannic variety and so just now releasing our 2014. Pretty killer eh? It's got a real ethereal nose it just sort of lifts. It's, it's got this beautiful fruit lift. Yeah super floral. You know on the palate it's um it, it's that typical that kind of austere Italian drying tannin that makes you crave a salami or something yeah that's super good so deb why did you start sangiovese in the first place with the 95 vintage originally we sourced uh we were looking for sangiovese grosso which is was isolated in il greppo vineyard at beyondi santi in 1888 as this particular clone sourced the cuttings from his cousin and he was very very kind to share some of those cuttings with us so we went down and they're all old minivan and filled the back end of it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so 2018 Merlot. You know, it's funny. We're, we've been a cab house primarily since the inception. But ironically, it was kind of Merlot that put Leonetti on the, on the world map. Oh, yeah. It was very, very yeah. big. I mean, that was, that was the variety. Uh, Merlot was being poured in every wine bar in, in America. And then uh, when Sideways came out, sales on Merlot kind of dropped. <laughs> God, that movie. Yeah. So now Merlot has bounced back. And, and yeah. uh, so, so the, the real producers, who's always made really good Merlots, could continue to do so. Uh, this year's the oh. 18s. Yeah, so good. So purity of fruit that Merlot has. that just It's just gorgeous this year. Just plum and the ripeness and softness. It just doesn't need the time in the cellar. And uh, 18 was... A wonderful vintage all the way around. On to the Cabernet. Yeah, so 17 was a really good year. It reminds me of 2012 and 2007. Just 
just a perfectly average year. I don't mean that qualitatively. I mean it in terms of the, the weather curve, and I think the wine shows it. Just really gorgeous singing nose. You could just tell it's cap in the nose because yeah. it's, it's just deeper and more restrained, you know, just showing that, that deep, dark black fruits. Cab is king. Cab is king. Long live the king. <laughs> <laughs> Leonetti Reserves have always meant something very special. We don't label it Cabernet Sauvignon just because we want the varietal freedom within, you know, to be able to add Merlot or Malbec, Petit Verdot. It could be labeled Cabernet Sauvignon because it's 75% or more. We're not so obsessed with what the variety is rather than it being the, the best barrels from our best blocks in any given year. So we blend the reserve first and, and then the Cabernet. And it's a reserve is, isn't necessarily meant to be a longer aged wine. It's meant to be our most complete balanced effort. Shows the best of what we're capable of. What was the first year you named a wine reserve, Dad? 1980. Yeah. Pretty ballsy for a three-year-old winery. <laughs> Tell me about right. it. Right. Some of our first uh, first fruit off of the Leonetti vineyard was so good. Right. Oh, it was just amazing. The nose on this is so floral, like a lot of white florals, like oh, um, either hints of gardenia or almost what's Almost honeysuckle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, honeysuckle. Which is pretty... Wow, pretty, that's, that's... Pretty for, exotic for yeah, a red Yeah, very, wine. very exotic for a red. Mm, great length, super seamless. Rich fruit. That's yeah. complete from from pretty, beginning to end. Pretty great. So oh. I, think it, I think it stands up to what we're what we're trying to do, and it's kind of become to be the standard bearer Washington, you know, which is something we're really proud of. Great. Well, hope uh, hope you guys can taste taste at home and enjoy these wines too. Um, we love hearing feedback on you know when you taste. We get notes all the time. They get emailed to us or text messages or calls or whatever. Um, people cracking special bottles. It's always really fun for us. Give people enjoyment and pleasure is, is what, uh, you know, it's what spools us up and keeps us going. So I thought I'd start a little vineyard tour, talk about our vineyards right here, where it all started. Um, so this little block of Merlot right here is actually the oldest vines in the valley. And a year before, my dad planted the original Leonetti vineyard, which we no longer have. But we've kept this block and it just keeps on ticking. Uh, makes really, really fantastic wines. Ironically, there's uh, four Cabernet vines in it and one Gewurz Tremere vine. <laughs> it shows just how detailed things were back in the 70s. Um, our other vineyards that we have are our Lust Vineyard, which is on the hillside behind the winery, to the east of the winery. And our Mill Creek Upland Vineyard, which is up Mill Creek Road, about 1,600 feet high elevation, um, our northernmost vineyard. And then on the south end of the valley, actually on the Oregon side of the border, we have our Holy Roller Vineyard, which is in the Rocks and Milton Freewater, our Sarah Padacci Vineyard, which is um, overlooking the valley on the very south end. Both Upland and Sarah Padacci produce these powerful, uh, more tannic wines because they're higher elevation, windy sites, whereas as Lus Vineyard, is, uh, is somewhere in between, and then Holy Roller produce our softest, most minerally wines. We farm all of our vineyards ourselves, in-house. It gives us a real advantage, I think. You know, we can, we can execute things and pay attention to detail that um, someone who's not farming for wine, but farming for grapes, might not otherwise. All right, time for a little winery tour. So this little building behind me, uh, that we now call the tea shed, and I'll show you why, we brew compost tea inside of it, is where it all started. And it was a tack shed when my parents bought this house when I was three years old. And so this would have been 76, moved in here and it became the winery. And the basement of the house was the cellar. So a lot of history in this little building. In some ways we're still making wine in there because we brew compost teas for the vineyard, but a uh, pretty neat little building and a lot of history. So then of course there's the famous Leonetti stone building. And I'm super proud of the fact that my dad my uncle and I collected every rock in this building. We'd go up on Sundays, fill up Bowl Green, that we called it, it's an old uh, Forest Service pickup truck that I recently just bought back. I'm really stoked. That's a whole nother video and gonna be a separate project. But uh, we'd fill up a, a pickup truck full of rocks that we'd pick up alongside the road up in the mountains on Sundays. They'd drink beer and wine and whatnot, and I'd play with my trucks and help load a few rocks. And then when I was in high school, 
I'd have to load the scaffolding for the mason every day uh, higher and higher. So uh, by my senior year, I think about is when we finished it. And uh, it was a big job every day after baseball practice. So this, of course, is our fermentation room for 46 weeks out of the year. This place is like this, calm, quiet, nothing going on, but two months out of the year where it is crushed. This is where it all happens right here. The crush pads um, right out in front of me here, or fruit comes in, all fermentations are going, we're doing pump overs, and, and you know, those few weeks is where the wine is really made. Our most intense time of year, uh, spend a lot of time in here with my team, and uh, absolutely love it. The, the smells you get during harvest time are just beyond amazing. You know, no matter how many harvests I get under my belt, when we start up the first fermentation in September, it always it makes me feel like a kid again, you know? It's just, because you only get that once a year, and, and you know, just those aromas that start coming off, it's usually Merlot that uh, crushes first, are, are amazing, and there's something special about, you know, putting your ears down in a tank, and you know, hearing that sounds like a bowl of Rice Krispies, and it's just getting going, and, and uh, it's, it's magic, you know? It's just sheer magic watching yeast turn grapes that we worked so hard on in the vineyard into a magical product uh, that gives them its pleasure in, in so many different ways. So at the end of fermentation, we drain the tanks. We call that a free run. That free run uh, goes downstairs into barrels via gravity, which is my absolutely favorite part of this whole building is the cellar. So let's go check it out. vineyard itself down to the very vineyard design. We try and make it beautiful and make it art. And uh, that's what makes it fun and different and original and inspiring. If it's not inspiring, it's probably not art. But you do have to acknowledge wine is not all art. Hopefully it's an expression of art once it's presented and in the glass, but it does take quite a fair bit of chemistry to get it there. So this is our lab where we run thousands of tests a year that help us determine, one, the health of the wine, two, um, understanding the, the balance of the wine and what we're looking for. So uh, it does require some chemistry, whether it's chemistry or in the cellar or in the vineyards, we spend a lot of time on precision. And I think being the son of the son of a machinist, things are measured in like a thousandth of an inch and, and have to be perfect. And we really try and execute that level of precision, whether it's in the vineyard or in the cellar or, you know, even, I just get, I get joy out of precision. And when I see someone else's vineyard where they really took their time to lay it out with per, to perfection, it gives me a lot of joy to see someone else um, taking the time and, 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 and doing it right like it ought to be done. So this is our beautiful uh, Lust Vineyard just to the east of Leonetti, which is right down there. And uh, it's pretty become a pretty iconic vineyard in the valley. It's got a big old American flag in the middle of it that is just, I love it. You know, we're right on the edge of town here. All these trees you see in the distance, that's uh, the city of Walla Walla. So we're just on the east side of town. And then uh, if we flip around, however, you will see that. It's very much country on the other side. Those, of course, are the uh, beautiful blue mountains off in the distance. Gorgeous. So guys, it's our little vineyard and winery tour. Hope you liked it. And um, you know, this I'm not obviously a professional video editor. I'm a winemaker. And uh, all this is just shot on an iPhone, super casual, but wanted to give you a little, little inside look. So sorry I'm not right here on the crush pad uh, greeting you this weekend, um, handing you a glass of wine, but uh, we do appreciate the support. And um, you know, if you like this video, uh, I'll make more of them and we'll have some fun with it throughout the growing season. I mean, 
we're all going to be stuck at home all year anyway. So let's make the best of it. That's what leadership is about. All right. Cheers. Peace.